transpersonal psychology class with Dr. Tobin Hart, we were given the assignment to come up with a spiritual leader that we respect and would want to showcase. And we were supposed to come up with evidence for what makes this person special. Of course, I had many choices. There were so many well-known gurus and swamis and yogis and healers and mediums and people that have done amazing feats normally thought to be impossible for most humans. I wanted to choose someone that didn't set out on a particular spiritual path, that wasn't practicing a, a particular spiritual discipline or religious discipline. I wanted somebody that wasn't in the business of spirituality, although I in no way have any problem with that, being in that business myself. But I wanted somebody who at their very core represented the values that we would typically ascribe to a spiritual and ascended person. These qualities, first and foremost, center around an ability to love. My friend Tony Carrito had that ability to love, more so than anyone I've ever met. But don't take my word for it. Let's look at the evidence in a most unlikely, unscientific place. Theme one, loving people. According to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, the definition of a Swami is a Hindu or religious teacher or one that resembles or emulates a Swami. Tony Carrito never set out to be a real Swami. He would have never in a million years called himself a spiritual teacher. He was an improv artist, a performance artist and an artist through and through with every cell of his body. And as you're going to see throughout this film, a major theme of his Facebook page was art, was expressing the divine in the smallest things, and in finding the meaning of everything around him. Tony had probably close to a 100 statues of Buddha in one form or another in his home. And this was an ongoing theme in his Facebook posts. So in making fun of spiritual teachers, he was in no way insulting them or diminishing their importance. He loved making people laugh. And he loved making people think just as much. And I believe that in playing a Swami, it helped him to work out certain concepts that he was trying to understand. He loved Eckhart Tolle, who wrote The Power of Now. And so oftentimes he would tell me he was reading a new book, and then we'd sit in a coffee shop and talk about some of those concepts. And before I knew it, he was sharing these concepts on stage. You gotta use your creative mind and soul. Canter. He's starting to canter. My pony's starting to canter, Miss Duval. I've seen the seven wonders of the world. I've seen the beauty of diamonds and pearls But they ain't nothing, baby Your love amazes me I've 
I've seen a sunset that could make you cry And colors of a rainbow reaching across the sky The moon in all its phases But your love amazes me Besides for being all loving, two other attributes of a God are being omniscient and omnipresent. Tony was not all knowing, but sometimes I thought he was always present. And I say that literally and figuratively. It didn't matter rain or shine. On almost a daily basis, I would run into Tony. It didn't matter where I was, in the natural foods grocery store, or a crystal store, or the gym, or the movie theater, or an art store, or hiking on some remote vortex. Tony would be there. And I would have thought he was a stalker, except oftentimes I'd walk into a place and he was there. I didn't have to make plans with the guy. I'd just go in somewhere and he'd be there. I can't tell you how many times I ran into him and he was so excited about a person he had just talked to, a tourist or someone over chess who had an interesting idea or an interesting story or an experience to share. He would just be so excited he could barely contain himself wanting to share about what they had just talked about. You really got the feeling that there was no other place he'd rather be except with you in that moment. That's how he became to be known the unofficial mayor of Sedona. He was everywhere. Mixing in natural elements with light and sound. Snapdragon. How are you today, miss? Fine, I just... Did you call me a Snapdragon? No, I didn't. I was in the, that was in the outtake. Uh, that's not going to be in this interview. Thank you. Now, uh, what is your favorite thing to do, Miss Snapdragon? Well, I like when people come down and sniff me. I love this video because it so I much demonstrates it. how Tony was truly such a kid at heart. He would spend so much time just by himself playing around. He didn't need an audience, although he was always happy to share when he was done. of us who knew Tony in Sedona, it was hard for us to imagine him ever living anywhere else. His family was from Italy originally, and we 
never really heard him talk about his family. We know that it was very painful. His brother died when he was only 27. When Tony was 30, his father passed away. And then soon after, his mother passed away. And rumor has it that she had taken her own life. Tony was very private about his financial affairs. However, his parents had left him quite a bit of money. So while he claimed he wasn't a multimillionaire, he said he had enough money to live comfortably on if he was careful. I think in many ways this allowed him to be more in the present and to have more of a relaxed joyful attitude about his art compared to so many of the other people in Sedona who were struggling. One notable thing about Tony's Facebook page for anybody who knew him well is the absence of photos and videos of perhaps the one person he loved more than anyone else on this planet besides for his parents, and that was Lori Burke. When I met Tony, they had been dating for quite some time and they were inseparable. They would perform together. She had the most angelic voice and he would often do improv. And they were always together for years. They began to grow their separate ways as far as their physical relationship. After a while they decided to just be friends. They were still always together until she started to date Robert Shields. Robert was known in the early 70s and 80s as being part of the performance and mime team Shields and Yarnell. Robert owned many businesses including art galleries and restaurants in Sedona. And when Lori started dating him this was very hard for Tony. I have been secretly programmed to observe human behavior. Because essentially it seemed as if the two of them couldn't really spend time together anymore. And he wasn't sure exactly where that was coming from. But he went through a period of sadness over that. And then... Lori and Robert did get married. She went on to go off and perform in faraway places on cruise ships. But tragedy struck, and she had a brain tumor. It was very sudden, and she passed away only a year after she had been married. Once again, Tony took this so If there hard. is such a thing as soulmates, Lori and Tony were it. One day a post showed up on my Facebook page from Tony and I thought, oh, I haven't talked to him in a little while. And I took a look and it seemed strange. It seemed as if somebody else were talking about him. It wasn't a post from himself. And they were expressing sadness. And then another... And then...
The number you have dialed has been changed. died in his sleep. No one's sure what happened, except he hadn't been feeling well after going for a day-long hike in Sycamore Canyon. Some friends found him about a week later in his bed. Tony had suffered from insomnia for as long as I had known him, and it seemed kind of ironic that that's the way he would go. Stars are 
like me yeah. I could make you happy Make your dreams come true Nothing that I wouldn't do Go to the ends of the earth for you To make you feel my love To make you feel my love Hi, I'm here at Pagosa Springs and it's almost sunset Everybody's just hanging out in this wonderful pool. You can hear the water in the background. It's wonderful. I love it. Here at Pagosa, enjoying myself, visiting, visiting people, and enjoying Pagosa. I see trees of green. Red roses too I see them bloom For me and you And I think to myself What a wonderful world I see skies of blue Wonderful. 